Yes, so welcome to this presentation. Uh, it will be about the NetDev CI. Uh, I'm Mathieu Bart. Uh, I'm from maintaining MPCP. But I'm not going to talk about that today, so you can stay. Uh, it will not be technical, really, so it's fine. We are on the afternoon, a bit tired, so probably a good time to have this talk. Uh, just a quick note is that uh, on the slide, I'm it's written that I'm affiliated to NGI Zero. It's just that I got some funding, uh, but I will see in the coming months what I will do next. Anyway, um, here so I'm going to talk about uh, NIPA, which is NetDev CI, and NIPA stands for NetDev Infrastructure for Patch Automation. So here the plan today is to describe what it is, why it's important to have it, uh, some stuff that needs to be known. Um, how we can extend it, like to cover more code. Uh, also, how we can replicate that in other subsystems. And maybe having some discussion about what is mis missing. So, the first part. Um, so, what does NIPA do? So, in very short, it tests stuff. So I guess I can switch to the next part of my presentation. Now, um, a, a bit of history first. Uh, before NIPA, uh, patch were hopefully tested somewhere. They were tested somewhere. Uh, the thing is that it was tested on like most uh, on companies company side, so a private test. Uh, of course, they were doing some build tests, statics tests, analytics tests, uh, functional tests, and all those kind of tests. Uh, but there was no really really a global view on what was going on there. Uh, there were also some CI that were validating different trees, uh, and they were publishing the result. Uh, so there was uh, Intel's Kbot, uh, Sysbot from Google, um, LKFT from Line Aero, and, and others. Uh, the problem with that is that you have a late feedback, and you don't really know when you will get a feedback, in fact. Um, so the situation changed in 2020, because uh, Jacob brought uh, NIPA to live, really good. Uh, starting point, so here we started with some static analytic test. Um, yeah, some basic patch, patch check, uh, also some build test with different tool chains, uh, and that this and that was and still executed by patch by patch. Uh, the results are publicly available. And that's really a big change because you can see that something is going on. It's not behind a uh, company VPN that you can access the result. In 2023, uh, that's the first change, a uh, big change, uh, is that the functional tests are appearing. So there are some new tests that appear, so Coxie checks in documentation building, building, but the important point here is KUnit is coming. And key unit, um, so simple, uh, simple test. But anyway, for for that you need to have uh, to start the kernel. Um, so in this case, you need a VM. But that's the first big change for NIPA. The results are still reported back on Patchwork, so that's great. But the main change here that is important for this tool here is that um, a month later the functional tests are definitively here. What it means is that uh, we have k self tests because there are a lot of uh, k self tests in the network subsystem. And for the moment, and it's still the case now, um, you have some VM that are running uh, these tests, uh, but that's a big change. Um, also, to complement that, there are also some web pages to present the result. And Again, still important, the results are publicly available. You can access the logs and everything. So at the end, what is NIPA? Um, we could say that it's just a bunch of script, but it's a bit more than that. Um, because you need to track the patches that are sent on NetDev. Uh, you also need some machine that build the test, uh, that build the kernel, and some other that run the test. And you also need to have a web service where you can present the results. But what it is not. Um, so NIPA is not a service to validate non-locally tested patches. Uh, so kids today, what they usually like to do is that uh, they do some modification, they then send it 
just check the CI after and, oh, it doesn't work. What happened when it doesn't work? I fix the first problem, I wait, I, I send my stuff and then I come back later. We don't want that uh, on NetDev because to do that, to achieve that, you need to send the patches somehow. So if you start doing that, that will increase the, the traffic and we really don't want that there are, and already enough patches there. Um, the other thing is that it's not a general testing it's not for a general testing purpose. Of course, it's focused on the networking part, and we don't want to host new tests over there. There are already other frameworks that are available. You can store the test there, continue to do that. So why is it needed? Well, it might be a bit obvious, but uh, the, the main purpose is to help the maintainers and the reviewers. Uh, it helps to get uh, quick automated feedback, um, that it also helped to reduce the feedback loop, uh, increase, increase the trust a bit on the patches. Um, one very important point is that it helped to reduce issues that are seen after merging, merging because that's something that's really time consuming for a maintainer is that um, you have something, you spend quite a bit of time in the reviews, and then that's only later that someone else come and say, oh, in my test suite, in fact, this, this is now broken because of what you did. You could have said that before. That's what we, that's the whole point of this NIPA here. Um, but when this happens, you, as a maintainer, you need to, to track what's going on because you want the fix. Uh, you also need to ping the right people trying to uh, have something being fixed. If it's not quick enough, you might want to revert, but when it's revert, you need to re-add it later and yeah, that's time consuming and that's something we want to avoid. Um, another point also is that um, it's also a bit there to have more control because here at least we can see how the tests are being executed. Uh, we can have an integration with patchwork because that's what is being used by the maintainers. And that's it for that part. Um, now regarding the functional test, uh, what's the current status? So roughly we have a, a bit more than 750 tests, but that's not counting the subtests. So there are really a lot of tests being run. It's just here the number of group, the, the group of tests that we have. Among the, those, uh, only eight are being ignored. And most of them are ignored because uh, they are a bit unstable when we run them in an unstable, uh, in a debug environment. Uh, may, maybe for that point it's not even a big deal that they are unstable because when we run these tests with a kernel, uh, with a debug kernel config, uh, the main purpose is to see if uh, the, some new tools can help to detect issues like uh, mem leaks and others. So maybe we don't really care about the end result. Um, also to have all the results, it takes approximately two hours. That's not too bad. Uh, a few VMs are running in parallel. Uh, that's we really needed to get the result quickly. But one very important point is that uh, it's not covering all cases. So again, don't use just this CI to say, I don't really need to do more tests. I just send them and, okay, if the CI says it's okay, that means that everything is perfect. I don't think that it works like that. So a bit more details now about how it works. Um, so, uh, as I said before, it needs to monitor the new patches that are sent on Patchwork. Uh, then when there are new patches, they are added to a build queue. In the build queue, there are some, of course, build uh, and other small tests that are being executed. Then the results are sent on Patchwork. And this takes something like uh, one hour, but it can take a bit more, of course, depending on the size of the queue and what you are sending. Then we have another step, which is, um, we, we could call it the periodic test period every three hours. So what's happening during these three hours? So first we start by creating a new branch. And this new branch, it's important, is on top of NetNext that is merged with Net if it's possible. So of course, sometimes there are some conflicts, so uh, we will only take NetNext in this case and then it might happen that some patches that are on top of net will not work well. That should be exception for the moment. Um, 
Of course, we only take the patches that are in review where, all the, where it can at least pass the build test. Uh, why do we do that? Uh, because the tests already take a long time. Sometimes some of them need to be retried. But also to cope with uh, future use, which is the hardware test, where these tests can take longer. Um, the functional tests are run in parallel. Um, so there are different kind of tests with uh, K-unit, K-self-test, BPF-self-test, and, and others. Uh, they are run for most of them with and without the debug kernel config. And yes, multiple VM, as I already said. Uh, after that, of course, the results need to be published somewhere, but they are mainly published for the maintainers and reviewers. That, that's an important point because sometimes the failures are not really problematic because, like, uh, I guess you all know a check patch, and sometimes it, it tries to help, but uh, also give you false positives. And we don't want people that just send and try to fix small things that doesn't really need to be fixed. Uh, so it's more to not tempt them to uh, really try to publish a lot of version. It's better to wait for a review um, and send all the fixes step by step um, after the review. Um, at the end, the results are visible on Patchwork, and there is also the web UI. Uh, we can have a look at that. Uh, so if you look at the patch on Patchwork, uh, you should see at the end of the check that there is the contest one. Uh, if you click on the link, you will be re redirected to something that I'm not sure you can read, but uh, uh, basically you have all the, the tests that are being run, when they have been run. Um, you can also see, of course, the result, the time. Uh, and what is important, you also have some links to get access to the logs. And you can also see the, what is called the, the matrix. Matrix. Sorry. Um, the matrix is helpful to see where the so what test was unstable. So sometimes, if you see that the test is unstable, you might try to understand why is it unstable. Um, so maybe it's not really your fault. Uh, but also, what we would prefer to is that maybe you will see that and you will see, oh, maybe I should try to help and fix the tests that are unstable. It would be really great. There is also a status page, but that's really for maintainers and reviewers, uh, more to see uh, what was going on uh, when the next results are expected. So let's not take a too long look at that. But uh, a good reminder here is that it's really oriented for uh, maintainers and reviewers. Of course, the developers can check. They are welcome to check, uh, more to trying to help and trying to improve the global situation. Um, if you send something on the mailing list, uh, that can also help you to prepare the eventual future version. But again, test locally first before posting a new version and probably wait for the review before doing that. Great. Uh, so if you still know some issues, you might want to reproduce that locally because that's what we ask. Um, for the static analytic issues, that should be clear enough, I think. Uh, like if you had a build issue with a specific tool chain, but you need to install this tool chain and try to reproduce the issue and fix it. Um, for the functional tests, uh, it's a bit more complex, so that's why there is a wiki page on the NIPAS uh, website. So the link is clickable, but not on the screen, unfortunately. Um, but it will describe that you can use a tool that is called uh, vertme uh, ng. It will help you to build the kernel and run the test in a VM, if, of course, you can reproduce that in a VM. Um, then you can reproduce them manually. We explain how to, to do that. Uh, you will also see that some tools are needed. So you might need to install some very common tools, like IP Route 2. Uh, but you might need to install a development version sometimes. So that's why maybe it would be helpful that, that's, uh, that there, there is something like a container having all the requirements, and maybe a container would be used by the CI to do the validation. So that's something in discussion and might come later. 
Yeah, so if you want to help and try to extend the code coverage, or if you want to introduce a new feature and you want to be accepted, uh, you might need to add new tests. Um, so to add, there are different ways to add new tests, or at least for the networking subsystem. Uh, there is, for example, KUnit. It's a lightweight unit testing framework, so uh, you give some specific input in a, to a function, and then you check that the expected output is there. Uh, there is also KSELF test, so some small tests to exercise individual kernel code paths. I will come back to that just after. Or you can also try to deploy, to deploy a new remote. So you might need that if you have a special infrastructure, like if you want to do some uh, tests requiring hardware. Or if you have complex or external dependency, like if you want to do some validation with BPF, you might need that. Um, regarding case self test, um, quick notes about that. It, it, it's really not complicated if you never looked at them. It's just a simple program in user space. And all it has to do is to return a code. So zero, for example, for, for pass, but doubt the code to say that this test is skip or fail or orders. There are some helpers in C, bash, Python, for the moment, more can come later. Uh, these helpers, for example, they can help to um, generate an output uh, that, will, that is following the tap format, and that's useful if you want to have um, subtest support, which is really great because sometimes you might put a lot of tests in your case of test, and maybe one will fail, but you don't want all of them being marked as fail. You, want, you really want to point out which one wasn't, was failing. Uh, in the helpers, you can also find um, some tools, like um, if you want to create some, uh, some network name spaces, for example, there are stuff that really help you to do that, so you don't have to start from scratch all the time, just use what is already available. An important point is the last one, is that uh, according to the documentation, all the case self tests, they should run on any kernel versions. Let's come back to that because in the documentation it says, running tests from mainlines offers the best coverage. So yes, sometimes tests are added later. That's not really nice. You should add the test at the same time as you add the new feature, but that's not always possible. Um, but they also say another point is that um, to regression test a bug, we should be able to run that test on an older kernel. And that's what some CI are doing, in fact. Uh, when they test a stable kernel version, they install the kernel's self-test from the latest stable version, and they run them on an old kernel. That can be tricky. Uh, but you cannot, you really want to support that because if you don't support that, you can have cell tests with a lot of uh, subtests. Like we had one with MPTP, like it takes half an hour to run. But we added a new case for a new feature, which of course failed on all kernels. And what happened at that time is that the whole self test, so the whole half an hour was run for nothing because it will always say that it failed. So you cannot even check if there were regression with the other subtests because at that time there was no support for it. That has been improved, but that's the kind of situation you want to avoid. But is it really a solution? Because, okay, that, that's in the documentation, but maybe it's not really feasible with networking tests. Um, when it was presented, it was more like, okay, uh, you introduce a new Cisco, well, that's easy to check if it's supported or not. You just try to call the new Cisco. If the kernel doesn't support it, you have an error. Okay, you skip the test. Easy. But that's not always possible. Like, you have a new feature, uh, and it's using the socket API. And maybe you cannot do that. Uh, I take a random example with uh, MPTP because I like that. Uh, in v5. Dot six, that's when we introduced MPTCP, and we did that uh, step by step, so there was only one pass available at that time. Really useful for MPTCP, but that's just that we need 
we needed to do that. Um, but then if you have a test that checks that when you create a connection in some con with some condition, you want to check that multiple paths are being created. If you do that on the 5.6 kernel, of course it doesn't work. But how do you check that your kernel support this feature or not? Because that's still the same API. It's still you, you create the connection, you send some data, and you expect to have multiple paths. There are some workarounds, and that's what we try to do. So you can check maybe if some counters are available. Uh, you can fall back to some uh, kernel symbols if they are there. That's a bit ugly. Or you can have it even uglier. You can check the kernel versions. And then we have some complaints from Red Hat people who say that, oh, but we backported your nice feature, but uh, the test doesn't work. It's skipped. Yeah. So try to avoid that. Um, but yeah, and, but my conclusion here is that maybe it doesn't work, and maybe we need to have some discussion with the people who are running the test that way to say that maybe do an exception for the uh, network subtest. And maybe we can do that because the networking test in uh, K self test are the most important one, I think. Also, if you count BPF, they are in the same case. We, want, we might want to do that. OK, so uh, another extension that is possible is uh, what I explained before, is the new remote. Um, so if you have some uh, hardware uh, specific that you need to test, like a, a NIC, or if you have an external test view that uh, it's a bit difficult to integrate in the kernel, that might be a solution. And you might want to then publish the result on, uh, on patchwork. So the, the main use case for that is the if you want to validate some drivers with real NIC, which is in fact a, a new requirement from uh, 6.12, so the new ones coming. And that's a requirement for the supported driver. So there is an announcement about that if you're curious or if you're a vendor. Um, but I will be quick about that. Is just that uh, if you need to implement that, there are some helpers to help. Uh, of course, you will need to set up a remote runner, uh, but then from there you will have some helper that will help you to uh, connect to different machine or to connect to different interfaces, like via different uh, network namespaces. But what I really want to discuss here is the reason why we want to have that. Uh, it's because we want to improve the, the feature delivery and the user and vendor participation. So a bit more details about that. Um, what can happen is that you what would be yeah, the, the ideal solution is that uh, the requirement and specification could be defined as test. Um, they can reflect use cases. And the end goal is to have them hosted in the case self test in the kernel. So we can run them when it's ready. By doing that, you might, we might also increase the compatibility between vendors, uh, can also share efforts. Uh, and of course, we can avoid regressions because if someone touched a driver, um, because they have to touch many drivers, you also want to make sure that it doesn't have any regression in the other ones. That that they cannot be easily maybe tested for by someone because it doesn't have access to the hardware. Um, to help for that, you can also use uh, NetDev Sims um, for prototyping. Uh, of course, the test doesn't need to be sent up front. Uh, you might want to do to either send them with the implementation or enable them when the implementation is ready. But the idea here is to make the upstream first development model more feasible. Good. Uh, the last part of my presentation is to um, explain how we can have that in other subsystems, like. This works well for a network subsystem, but if you are part of a sub subsystem of networking, for example, you might want to have that kind of stuff on your side too. So if people send patches on another mailing list, you might want to have the same kind of test before you send the pull request to the net uh, to net dev mailing list. So if we look at the global picture here. Uh, the workflow that you expect is that you have some patches that are shared on the mailing list and are also visible on Patchwork. You want them, you want to have the patches in Git or applied somewhere. 
Uh, you then want to build kernels and launch some tests, and you want to have the result somewhere. So we can look at what is possible and what can help to have that set up on your side. For the first part, um, there is a service called Patchu, developed by Red Hat. Uh, the main goal of this tool is really to monitor a mailing list and apply the patches. It looks like that. I'm not sure it's visible, but uh, we can see in this gray line in the middle that uh, Patchu applied the patches on GitHub, on a GitHub repository, with a special tag. Uh, with Patchu, there are also some nice tools, like you can see a difference with, uh, between the V1 and the V2, for example, that has been sent, so that's also something that can be useful for other reasons. But now, okay, we have all patches that are applied on Git. Uh, we can have a CI building them. The expected result is to have something like that. Um, so you have some build that have been run, uh, with different configuration, uh, some different tests also with different uh, kernel config, and you want to have the result at the end. Just an example here. For that, you have some requirements. Um, you will need a service or, did, or some dedicated server if you have uh, some dependencies, like hardware dependencies. Then you want to run the test, but to run the test, you need to set up the environment. Uh, then you need to build a kernel, you need to run the, uh, a VM or run the kernel somewhere. If you have a VM, you want KVM support because otherwise you will see that uh, your test doesn't pass because it's too slow, especially with a debug kernel config. Then you will realize that, yeah, but uh, I'm spending quite a bit of time building, so you might want some cache there or git cache. And then you want to catch the errors um, because like if you run with a debug kernel config, sometimes it's just that you have a warning in Dimesk, but your test can pass, so you also want to catch that. Sometimes it's a bit more complex, like you have KMang leak, so you need to uh, force a scan, and then you need to check the result elsewhere. But there are some stuff that can help here. Like uh, if I take an example again with, with MPCP here, here for the environment, we use a Docker container. So anybody can run this command with a, a few options that are not visible here because it's too long. But it will download the containers with all the required tool, and then there is a script there that will launch the test and give the result at the end. It, you can also do many other stuff with that, but that's the main purpose. So if you have a VM, Something that can help is to use uh, virtmeng, that's what it's packaged in the Docker containers. Um, so it can be used to build and run the VM. But as I said before, you also want to have KVM support. And for that, many CI that are public, like you can, that are open for open source project, uh, they don't support KVM. Um, so when we started to look at that for MPCP in maybe 2020, there were not so many uh, solutions that were available. One of them was Sirius CI, so we started to use them. Was working well, and then they decided to uh, add some time limit. Was not really nice for us. Um, we could have hosted uh, some runner somewhere or something like that, but that's something that is difficult when you are collaborating between companies because who will set them up? Uh, sometimes it's difficult to have someone like to ask for money to do that. So what was done at the end is that the smallest company that was participating to uh, this project, so where I was working, we had to do something. Uh, but yeah, we were hesitating to pay for that or, or I mean to have to maintain that service. So we tried to look at the solution that were available, so that's why we started with series. Then we were stuck because there were the limit, there was, and to avoid the limit, we started to use GitHub Action, but the, that was without the KVM support, so we tried to have a runner. I tried to have a runner at home, uh, but the one who owes me, there we, I only have a 20 meg downstream, uh, 20, meg, 20 megabyte per second uh, line, which is really slow. I didn't want to clone the repository every day, multiple times a day. 
But that was good because at the end um, they changed the runner at GitHub and you can have KVM support, except that it's a bit hidden. Uh, so it's opting if you want to have it, but that's possible. Um, small thing, you also want Ccash. Um, just to speed up a bit the thing there, you don't want to have the build taking long and long. Uh, you also want to catch error, as I said before, and maybe for that there are some shared resources that can be used because at the end that's always the same keywords that you need to um, try to find in the logs. So there are some solutions here. Once you have the build, you want to publish the results. Um, there are different things that can be done here, but on, I guess, any service, you want to uh, publish the logs, that's certainly easy. Um, publish some more artifact, like uh, debug stuff, uh, also certainly easy to do. Um, you might also want to show the last result, and, and with KSELF tests and many uh, tests that are in the kernel, they use a tap parser or different version of it, but uh, there are different tap parsers there for this format. Uh, and you can also convert it to other formats. So that's something that should be easy to do, but still need to be done. And last point is that uh, you also want to check regression because sometimes tests are unstable. You want to see when it was unstable last. And for that, there are not, nothing on GitHub or nothing else that I found. It was nice. Uh, so we ended up doing a homemade solution, copied from Nipa, in fact. And that looks like that. It's just that you want to see uh, when the tests were run. It's just that the failure was at the end. I had to cut, so that's why it looks all green. But uh, that's the idea. Uh, it, it was unstable at that point. It was just something wrong at that time that has been fixed, so that's fine. But there are still quite a, a lot of different things that you need to assemble there. Um, so if you're interested by doing that, maybe easiest is to contact me. You can also look at, the, at what we are doing for MPCP. Uh, there is also the container and see what we can do with it um, and, and copy some of the, of the parts for your side. But there is kind of a trend that is coming here where, um, or at least on, in the DRM side, they would like to have something where all the subsystem can easily have that test being um, executed somewhere. Uh, they are talking about GitLab and that kind of thing, so that's that's because they are using the free desktop uh, infrastructure there. But they are open to discussion. So there, there is maybe something coming. Uh, I will try to participate to these discussions. But if you are interested to have some tests being run in other subsystem, don't hesitate to, to contact me and join the discussion because there will be hopefully something easier in the future. And that's the very last part of my presentation. Um, just some discussion, if we have time. Uh, just to see, maybe to discuss what is missing in NIPA, if we have some ideas, or missing elsewhere, CI related. Don't hesitate to interrupt me. Okay, so uh, I have a question. Does the bot infrastructure do bisecting if it finds a regression? Uh, can it point to a specific commit now? Done by who? Sorry. Did it, uh, the, did reg it? the regression that are done by? If, if, if the infrastructure finds a regression, can it point to a specific commit? Can it do bisect? Not with this infrastructure, no. So oh, not yet. Okay. So maybe just one suggestion. Yeah. Future. But for example, for MPCP, uh, because it's really easy to reproduce the uh, the test locally, like with the command that I put at some point there, that's also very easy to do the bisect uh, locally because you just need to run the command there after the I mean when you do the bisect and it will run all the tests and we do the report. But that's not something that can be done on NIPA or with the NIPA infrastructure. But if there is a container, for example, that is there, that's also something that would help to do that kind of thing. But 
I think the goal is really not to have Nipa doing the bicep for you. No. Mm. Oh, but okay. that's something, yeah. I don't know, maybe there will be more resources later. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, another question is whether, because a regression can be, for example, if uh, throughput is over than, than it was in the previous build. So it has to, the infrastructure has to remember some, some information from previous. Does, does it currently, is it capable of that now? No, and if I'm not mistaken, we are trying to avoid having to track that. Because so you that's want, quite you want to make it stateless? Yes. Okay. But that, that's something important and that's, yeah. We can, we can store the data, but we don't want to be responsible for like tracking it ourselves, right? Because it's very prone to false positives. Uh, and last question, uh, you mentioned that uh, if, uh, so does everything, does this net the bot infrastructure only use virtual uh, machines or so no, no real hardware testing? Not, no? not yet, but okay. that's coming. And uh, are you, uh, would it be possible to send some boards for testing so, so to your farm? So do you mean to? Or, or uh, to provide some boards? Ah, some board, sorry, I didn't get it. Yeah. We don't have a lab right now. These are just machines in, a, in AWS. We are trying to get the vendors to like, participate a little bit more so we can have someone who, who actually has a lab and we can send all the hardware there, but it's nothing material. Okay, thanks. Uh, in my experience, performance testing is like completely different game than functional testing, so I would suggest to separate it. And also for performance test, usually in my experience, it's very hard to compare old results with the new ones because it's not, it's probably not going to be 100% stable because something will change. For example, mm -hmm. just the switch in the test infrastructure will burn down, so you will change it for some other switch and suddenly the results will be different and it will have no relation to the code changes whatsoever. So if you want to do performance tests, you have to have the ability to basically run the old version and new one like every time so you can compare it on the exactly same setup. Otherwise, the old results will be, you know, nonsense after yeah. some time. Yeah, it makes sense. But that's also the reason why it's, it's not there yet. Yeah, yeah. Not in this plan for the near future. Yeah, I'm trying to say that it might not be the best goal for the near future because there's lots of work yeah. before that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Would be really nice to add some, uh, I don't know, Pi Hall Div to warn about like introducing new big holes and paddings because people love to do that really sometimes. And also uh, regarding the like previous presentation uh, uh, about CFAR, I think this could play well. CFAR could just say, hey, your patch increases like cash line usage here and there. Yeah, yeah but uh, I think that kind of test can be easily added by anybody. Like I think Sabrina is looking at some stuff with the UAPI. That's something that can, I mean, you don't need to have access to the machine to, to add them, so anybody can add that kind of test. But yeah, definitely we, we would like to have that kind of test. For what you mentioned, that test should be running on all kernels. I feel that is pretty straightforward. If you want to test a new capability, that capability should come with some sort of probe. A netlink command, test for a sysfs file, something. How else is a user going to know that the capability exists? Yes and no. Um, in all cases with MPCP, not everything is exposed uh, because of course, we didn't have MPCP with all the features from the start. So at some point, a feature was not present, but not some. it's something that is managed by the kernel, not triggered by the user somehow. And you, want, you still want to validate it. 
but there is no interface for the user to know that. And that's missing, I would say. It's new capability that exists in the kernel. Yeah, there should be some query to see that it exists. I mean, that way, maybe. But I don't know which which interface we would use then. Because, like, uh, for MPTP, we are limited to the socket API. And I don't think that we would add up front, like, get stock up stuff, like, to say, is it available for everything that can be possible? That's hard to put in place. I mean, yeah, I understand that there, something can be put in place, but that's really hard. And at the end, the user might not care about that. It's just that we are validating the implementation. And that's it, yeah. Like, there are some very small things, like there are some retransmission that can be done on some very specific packet. If it's not there, OK, it doesn't work as good, but it works. If it's there, that's better. But does the user need to know about that? I don't know. Yeah, but then it's questionable whether you need to add a test. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it might not be only a new feature. And maybe that's also more the question if I did something wrong here. Um, so um, I j re just recently, last uh, week, added a test um, that on all their kernels will crash the kernel. Because there was a bug in the kernel, and I added a self-test, and it will crash the kernel if you have not applied the patch that comes with it. Does this count as run on old kernels? Because it will crash the kernel. <laughs> I mean, it runs, but it crashes then in the end. Yeah. Yeah, but I, for me, the idea would be that you have a fix, you, you attach a, a test with it, mm -hmm. and both the fix and the test are backported, and that's the backport that is being validated. Okay, so it, it's the expectation, it it's runs on a properly backported system, not yeah. on you take any yeah, of course, kernel of course, version yeah, yeah. from somewhere, some yeah. random kernel, and it just runs. It's just that you, on yeah. the stable kernels, or on the backport, old, stable, you expect it to run. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because it's time to take <laughs> Hello, I'm from Sysbot team. And the question tell me is like the coverage artifacts downloadable or downloadable <laughs> downloadable here. No. No way. I think the reason is that we are a bit ashamed of the current <laughs> code coverage. <laughs> No, no, uh, no, it's not possible for the moment. Okay, any plans to add them? Uh, is there a big impact? Uh, I'd like to direct further towards the areas not covered by test. Yeah, but I mean, if we run the test with the code coverage, is there a big impact for, like, for the test itself? Like, if we introduce that, could we have more tests that are unstable because it takes more resources or something like that? Because I think that that's the main point. Uh, if we start, if we add new features that help, uh, of course, I, I know it's helpful here, and that would be really great to have it, but if it impacts the test, and make them unstable because it takes a slightly longer time to do something. I didn't have that. OK. Yeah. Also, something about the test coverage is that uh, it's also very difficult to have a big uh, test coverage for the error path. That's where Sysbot is really helpful, because it can find many crazy ways to find error paths. And when you design a self-test from user space, sometimes it's hard to, like, you need to inject some fault somewhere. And from user space, that's not always easy to do that. So we all right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh